Welcome to the LNR training video servicing the LNR Impulse program. As LNR service reps, there are a variety of products, categories, or programs that you might service. They could include cosmetics, pet supplies, hair accessories, etc. These categories would normally be found in a specific spot, aisle, or section of the store. We have another program called the Impulse Program. The fixtures and products for the LNR Impulse Program are located throughout various sections of the store. The Impulse product is merchandised on up to four types of fixtures. Swing strips, black cooler door canes, cream colored power wing or end cap canes, and swivel J hooks. Depending on the retailer, some or all of these fixtures may be used in their stores. Swing strips are attached to shelving in the aisles. These swing strips allow product to be merchandised on peg hooks on both sides of a plastic strip. Depending on the account, the number of swing strips in each aisle will vary, but they are never placed directly across from each other. In this illustration of a store aisle, the swing strip placement, as shown by red X's, is alternated by side down the aisle. In addition, the swing strips are placed near the break between two shelf sections. Black cooler door clip canes are positioned on cooler freezer doors and typically placed on every third door. Cream colored power wing or end cap clip canes are merchandised on plastic power wings found at the end of aisles or placed on end cap. The swivel J hooks are normally placed in store sections with small products such as the HVC department. The types of products in the Impulse program are extremely diverse from kitchen timers to toys to dusters to pet items. The exact mix of products found in any store depends on a variety of things but mainly on the quantity of fixtures and where those fixtures are located throughout the store. Each account that carries our Impulse program, such as a CVS or Sunmart, will have different store layouts and different requirements for fixture location. Even different stores in the same account may have different fixture locations because of particular store layouts or other facets unique to that store. Bottom line, in many cases, no two stores are exactly alike when it comes to fixture locations and quantities. There may be some differences in how the Impulse program is serviced in different accounts, but the major elements to servicing the Impulse program are the same. Straighten up the merchandise in the store, putting products moved around by customers back on the correct fixtures. Put up the order created from the previous visit to the store. Create a quality order to fill the fixtures on the next visit. To perform the servicing duties in the Impulse program, a rep must have an understanding of location codes, sometimes also referred to as locator codes. Location codes are unique to the Impulse program. Location codes are five-digit numbers assigned to different locations throughout the store. Location codes are found in two places. They're printed on one inch by two inch white reorder labels that are placed on impulse program fixtures and they're found on small locator labels attached to product indicating at what location in the store that product is to be merchandised. I mentioned earlier that the fixtures and products for the impulse program are located throughout the store. Each fixture is in a location. For example, if a swing strip fixture is located in front of the cereal products, the location of that fixture is cereal. If a clip cane is hanging on a freezer door by ice cream, that cane's location is cooler door ice cream. It's advisable in this impulse program to look at fixtures and the products on those fixtures as being in and belonging at a particular location. So each fixture is in a location and each fixture should have a reorder label with a unique locator code affixed to it. Reorder labels come in sheets. Each reorder label is different and there's a reorder label appropriate for every fixture in the store depending on the location of that fixture. 
reorder labels are specific to categories. So there are labels for electronics, candy, snacks, cleaners, etc. There are reorder labels for nearly every type of product you can find in the store. So if a fixture is in the baby section, it should have a baby reorder label on it. If a fixture is in the cereal aisle, it should have a cereal reorder label on it. And there are multiple labels for multiple fixture positions for every category. Again, all reorder labels have location codes with five digits. The first three digits indicate a particular category. In this example, the category is food candy. The digit designation for food candy is the first three digits, 801. The last two digits are positions and will run consecutively, usually starting at 01 for as many positions as exist for that category. Here's another reorder label example with a location code of 81702, indicating GM Electronics position number 2. Notice there is no particular product listed on the reorder label, only category and position. That's because when you use this reorder label to order, you're not ordering a particular product, you're ordering to a location. However, at any one time, a particular product is designated for a particular location, which brings us to another element of the impulse program, the location map. This is the present location map for CVS, and each account's location map would be a little different depending on the UPCs and categories carried by that account. Notice on this location map for CVS that 80101 is food candy number one. The product currently designated for that location, as shown here, is a magnetic number letter toy. On the same location map is food cooler pizza. The present product for food cooler pizza number two, or 80802, is a Totino's plastic pizza cutter. Over time, however, the products designated for a particular location may change as products are discontinued and new items introduced. Also related to reorder labels, on the swing strip fixtures, there should be a different reorder label on each side of the fixture since a different product hangs on each side of the fixture. However, only one product hangs on each clip cane or hook, so only one reorder label would be on each one. So, with an understanding of the Impulse Program's fixtures, fixture locations, location codes, and reorder labels, let's put it all together and perform a service call. Number one of many crucial elements of a service call is to service the store on a consistent basis, according to that store's service frequency. So as an example, if a store is on a two-week service frequency, service it consistently every 14 days. Late service calls and missed service calls create immediate issues. If you're going to be servicing a store late, be sure to contact Chain Sales Support. Crucial element number two, on each store visit, locate and identify yourself to store management and address any questions or concerns he or she might have. The importance of a good relationship with store personnel cannot be overstated. Locate the order that you took on your previous visit to the store. It should have arrived two or three days before your store visit. Check to be sure the order has been checked in by store personnel. Report any invoice discrepancies such as shortages of cartons or product, items not on file, etc. to customer service at 800-441-7173, extension 1000. Sort the product in the boxes by aisle by using the location labels on the product. Then pack out the order on the appropriate fixtures. So as an example, if you've received an item with an 83203 baby location code on it, proceed to the baby aisle and place it on the fixture with the reorder label 83203. As you pack out the order, check the product already hanging on the fixtures to make sure it's in the correct location. Obviously, any Impulse Program product you find anywhere in the store should be placed in proper locations. Does it feel like things are coming together? Let's continue. After packing out the order, proceed to write a new order for the next service call. 
Most of you will be ordering using a Cypher lab device. There are separate instructional videos for operating the Cypher. In ordering, start at one end of the store and go aisle by aisle, checking every fixture or location. When you want to order items for a particular fixture location, scan that location's reorder label and enter a quantity. A typical fixture will hold at least six pieces of each item. Remember to put in the exact number of units you want in your next order. Also, and let's call this crucial element number three, remember to order to replace what is missing that day, but also what might sell between that day and the next service visit. If you don't, you'll constantly be falling short on inventory. Now this is not easy and never exact, but it will get easier as you continue to service stores and gain important ordering experience and knowledge. Also, in some cases, with good selling items, you might need to order more product even if the fixture is full, because some of those items will sell before you return. With all this in mind, ordering is your biggest challenge. If you can do it right, you'll eliminate many potential issues. You can never be perfect in ordering, but the biggest mistake you can make is to order too lightly and to start having low inventory and empty fixtures. The key, again, is to always order more than just what is missing. You must also order what will sell before the next call. Also, and this will be crucial element number four, in ordering, do not scan UPCs on the product. You might or might not get the product in your next order, but it will not have a location code on it. And do not scan the store retail tags. The system will not understand and you will receive nothing. Bottom line, only scan L&R reorder labels to place orders. With the Impulse program, we can give credit for damaged product. This does not, however, include empty packages. Follow the information in the returns processing video but the following are particular to the Impulse program and indicate when you would process a return. Process damages if the value is $50 or more. That would usually mean around 30 pieces. Process damages if the store is going to have an inventory. Or process damages if you haven't done so in the current calendar quarter. Note that each item should have an associated retail tag on the fixture. While it's the store's responsibility to maintain the retail shelf label, be sure to notify them when a retail tag is missing. If a store is still very low on merchandise after you put up the most recent order, call Chain Sales Support to determine if special action needs to be taken. It might mean shipping the next order and servicing the store sooner than regularly scheduled. You may run into situations where the product on a fixture is not the proper item for that location according to the locator map. This can happen naturally in the course of setting and servicing the store. Time will allow for product to get to the correct location. There are a lot of things that can happen with the impulse program that can create issues and questions. You might visit a store and find reorder labels missing, fixtures moved or taken down completely store product hanging on our displays, etc. Discuss these situations with store management, but when issues arise that don't seem to have a solution, be sure to call Chain Sales Support. And remember the four critical servicing elements. Service stores on time, consistently. Maintain a good relationship with store personnel. That will help keep the customer satisfied and maintain and build sales. Order sufficient quantities that will fill fixtures on the next service call. That means ordering more than just what is missing the day you order. Order by scanning reorder labels, not UPCs, not retail tags. And finally, be sure to communicate as often as necessary with chain sales support and stay informed and up to date by visiting the LNR INET site daily. Good luck in servicing. And this concludes the LNR training video, Servicing the LNR Impulse Program.